Hello everyone, my name is Martin Newman. I'm a plastic surgeon and we're here today at iSpies and I'm speaking with Dr. Di Pasquale, a breast surgeon from Texas. Yes, I am a fellowship trained breast cancer surgeon out of Dallas, Texas. I work with Texas Oncology and I'm also on the board of Susan G. Komen and I run, I'm the medical director of oncology um, at the Methodist Hospitals. Now as a breast surgeon, I assume you work with plastic surgeons very closely. Can you tell me something about your relationship with the plastic surgeons? Yeah, I use one plastic surgeon and his brother to do the flaps, so it's a two-surgeon team. Um, and it is like, they're my very good friends. <laughs> the main thing between us is that there's fluidity in our conversation, in our friendship, in our coordination of care. We're always texting and talking about different patients. And in fact, he actually sees patients in my clinic, um, so it makes it easy that he's in the same office as I am in terms of coordination of operative times. So when a patient comes to you and they've been newly diagnosed with breast cancer and they're investigating their options, mm -hmm. how do you coordinate the visit to the plastic surgeon in your office and how do you coordinate the care that you may be giving? So we have a nurse navigator. So the nurse navigator from the beginning is the one who calls the patient from the time of diagnosis. And then we have a multidisciplinary clinic where all new breast cancer patients come together and they meet myself, a medical oncologist, radiation oncologist. And then at that time, um, we tell them, know your options. Option number one, lumpectomy radiation. Option number two, mastectomy with or without reconstruction. And then we go deeper into that and just saying, well, option number one can also be with an oncoplastic reduction. Um, why don't you meet a plastic surgeon? Option number two can also be with reconstruction. Why don't you meet a plastic surgeon? So it's really about telling the patients from the first visit their options and letting them know their options and then telling them, okay, now go get informed. And I understand that you may use uh, ICG fluorescence in your uh, practice. Can you tell us a little bit about that? Yeah, I think, you know, using the ICG and geography is, is instrumental to my practice. I think it really takes the blame out of surgery. I think we use the spy technology up front to really know what's going on. And for me, it's working in the OR with my plastic surgeon. Before I leave the OR, I spy my own flaps um, which, to make sure that I am comfortable now handing this over and saying I've done a good job, I've cheated where I need to cheat in the cancer side, I've juiced it on the, you know, the perforator side to allow for that flap to really succeed. I don't know about from you working with your breast surgeon um, how that relationship is as well. Well, we have a very similar pathway. Mm -hmm. Everyone who sees a breast surgeon, sees a plastic surgeon, or at least is offered an appointment. Uh, we do work under the same roof. So in a similar fashion, it's easy to go from one office to another to meet with the plastic surgeon and to learn about the options. Globally, we offer everyone either a um, autologous reconstruction or an implant-based reconstruction. You guys do a lot of nipple sparing, and how do you use the ICG angiography? Well, ICG angiography is used uh, any time that I'll walk into the room and take a look at a mastectomy flap. In fact, in our practice, I usually ask the breast surgeon to stay in the room while we're spying the flaps so that we can both get an idea of well, what we have to work with. And again, like in your practice where you're taking the blame out of it, uh, we don't point fingers. We just take a look at the mastectomy flap and see where the perfusion is. So we look at it together, and based on the flap that we have to work with, we then proceed accordingly. When I'm in there with the plastic surgeon, we always want to cheat where it counts, you know, so really skinny up on that cancer side, know your images up front, pull your images up. Prior to even starting the surgery, I'll have an MRI if I have it, or imaging up of calcifications of mammogram, and the plastic surgeon and I will look at it together. And I'm also spying or using the ICG angiography preoperatively. Using it up front, you really are able to, especially in nipple sparing, where, where do you put the incision, because there's so many options. Um, I'm a big proponent of inframammary fold incisions. I do not like circumarial or with an extension, I just find that you're doing your, your best to try to make the patient incisionless, right? When they when they get through all this or non-visible scars, so why put one in the center of the breast? So for me, it's really about using that inframammary fold. And as we know, there's lots of different um, perforators that come from that region. Are they more coming from the lateral? Are they coming from the medial? And that allows me to kind of skew where my inframammary fold incision is by doing some preoperative angiography. So if I understand you correctly, before you even cut skin, you spy the patient to see where the perforators are. And then based on that image, you then plan your incision with the plastic surgeon. Yeah. That's excellent. We do yeah. that for 
for uh, reconstruction when we look for perforators in, for example, an ALT. Mm -hmm. Is there a case that you have that this spy technology really did change patient outcomes? Well, I think that um, spy technology changes almost everything uh, that I do, frankly. Um, you'll never be able to eliminate all complications, but if we can reduce the rate of complications, uh, that's a win. Since I've been using spy technology, uh, we have reduced greatly our mastectomy flap necrosis rate. In fact, in my practice, it's approaching zero. I've downsized from a full-sized implant to a tissue expander, so I wouldn't put too much pressure on the mastectomy flap. So I think every case benefits from uh, more information, information gleaned from ICG imaging. Well, Dr. D. Pasquale, I've learned quite a bit from speaking with you. It sounds like you have an excellent relationship with your plastic surgeon, which is really the way to go. When the doctors work together, the patient benefits. And I want to thank you very much for taking the time and spending a few moments with us. Thank you very much.